No bed. No fire. Frozen ground. That is not discomfort. That is heat loss. When your body touches cold ground, heat doesn't fade. It gets pulled out. Constantly. Even while you sleep. Most people think winter kills through cold air. It doesn't. It kills through the ground. Put a warm body on frozen ground long enough the ground wins. Every time. Medieval Europe. 11th to 14th century. Stone monasteries. Bare floors. No personal fires. No wooden beds for poor monks. They lay on stone or packed earth. Night after night. In winter, no mattress, no heat, no blanket thick enough to save a mistake. Lie down wrong and you don't rest. You lose body heat all night. You wake up weaker or you don't wake up. This is not faith. This is physics. And they learned one rule early. Never let the body touch frozen ground. Block heat loss first. Then solve the next problem. Five techniques. None of them are comfort. Skip one you pay for it that night. When there is no bed, no straw, no mattress, frozen ground becomes the killer, stone, clay, packed earth, all of it steals body heat on contact. If you lie directly on frozen ground, heat loss never stops. It continues while you sleep, slow, constant, deadly. Monks did not start by getting warm. They started by doing one thing, interrupting heat transfer. They did not lie flat on the floor. Not if they wanted to survive the night. First move, most important move, they broke contact. Not to feel warm, to reduce heat loss. They lifted the body 5 to 10 centimeters. That was enough to change the speed of freezing. They used what existed inside the monastery dry branches, short planks, scrap timbers, flat stones as supports. Nothing soft, nothing cozy because comfort was not the goal. Insulation was. Air conducts heat poorly. Stone does not. Rules mattered. Never lie directly on stone. Never crush the layers underneath. Never place the platform where cold air runs under the body. Planks were placed close, low, tight, enough to keep skin off frozen ground. Benedictine monastic records in England 12th century Describe raised sleeping planks used in winter dormitories, not beds, heat barriers. Skip hack one and every other hack fails because the ground keeps stealing heat directly. No bed, no fire, just separation. Not comfortable, but no longer sliding into freezing. But breaking contact with the ground is not enough. If the layer beneath you gets damp, insulation collapses. When there is no mattress, when straw is damp, when frozen ground wicks moisture upward, heat loss accelerates. Cold ground doesn't just steal body heat, moisture helps it do it faster. If the layer beneath you gets wet, insulation collapses. Body heat drains away, slowly, all night. Medieval monks understood this risk. They did not rely on straw alone. Straw rots, straw absorbs water, straw fails in winter. Instead, they used dry organic layers, moss, grass, leaves, seagrass in coastal regions. The rule was simple. Dry materials first, air pockets second. Moss was preferred. It stays springy when dry. It traps air. It resists compression. Oak leaves and chestnut leaves were also used. They dry quickly. They don't collapse under body weight. These materials were laid thick, never packed tight. Compression kills insulation. Air is the barrier, not warmth. A thick, loose layer kept body heat from reaching the frozen ground. It slowed heat loss, enough to survive the night. There were rules. Never sleep on damp material. Never reuse wet layers. Never ignore smell or mold. Wet bedding turns insulation into a heat sink. That's how people freeze slowly. Layers were replaced often. Sometimes daily in winter, in Irish monasteries, records from Skellix, Michael 7th to 12th century, describe monks sleeping on moss and seagrass inside stone cells with no beds and no fire. Those were not comforts. They were moisture barriers, no padding, no softness, just dry material and trapped air. 
Without this layer, body heat leaked downward all night. With it, heat loss slowed, not stopped, slowed. And slowing heat loss was the difference between surviving the night and freezing. No mattress, no fire, frozen ground. Dry organic layers were not optional, not clean, not pleasant, but insulating. When there is no thick blanket, when all you have is a monk's robe, the frozen ground keeps stealing heat. Most people make the same mistake. They wrap wool around the body. They ignore what's underneath. That's how heat loss continues. If you lie on frozen ground, body heat escapes downward first. All night, even while you sleep, medieval monks learned this the hard way. They did not place wool on top first. They placed wool under the body, between skin and ground. Wool was used as insulation, not decoration. Raw wool mattered. Coarse wool mattered, not softness. Wool traps air. Air slows heat loss, even when damp wool keeps insulating. That's why it worked when straw failed and leaves collapsed. The rule was simple. The ground steals heat faster than the air, so the ground must be blocked first. A wool layer was laid flat on stone or packed earth. Then the body went on top. Outer clothing could stay thin. The layer underneath mattered more. There were rules. Never place wool only on top. Never let skin touch frozen ground. Never waste insulation above while losing heat below. This was not comfort. This was heat control. The rule of St. Benedict's 6th century allowed monks to wear and use coarse wool, but forbade animal furs. Wool was permitted because it worked, not because it felt good. Archaeological evidence from stone cells across England and northern France shows wool layers used directly on floors during winter months. They were not blankets. They were ground insulation. No fire. No bed. Frozen ground. Placed wrong wool does nothing. Placed under the body heat loss slows. Not stopped. Slowed. And slowing heat loss was the difference between surviving the night and freezing. No luxury, no thickness, just wool in the right place. Not rich, not soft, but correct. When there is no fire, no stove, no hearth inside the cell. Cold does not stop. Frozen ground keeps stealing body heat. Cold air keeps moving. Heat loss continues even while you sleep. Medieval monks did not try to warm the room. They knew it was impossible. Instead, they controlled position. They slept close to thick stone walls. They avoided the center of the room. They avoided moving air. Stone walls did not feel warm, but they were stable. A wall built 60 to 90 centimeters thick did not change temperature quickly. It absorbed heat during the day. It released that heat slowly at night. Not warmth, stability. That difference mattered. Sleeping in the middle of a stone cell was dangerous. Cold air pooled there. Heat escaped in every direction. Corners were different. Two walls reduced exposure. Less airflow, less heat loss. The rule was simple. Never sleep in open space. Never lie in a draft path. Always choose mass over air. The human body loses heat faster to moving air than to solid stone. Monks placed their insulation layers directly against the wall. Organic layers first, wool above them, then the body. The wall acted as a thermal buffer, not a heater. Archaeological evidence from Celtic and Norman stone cells across England and Ireland shows sleeping areas consistently located against thick walls or in corners. This was not habit. It was survival placement. No fire, no bed, frozen ground. Stone walls did not make nights comfortable. They slowed heat loss. Air movement dropped. Temperature swings flattened. Not warm, but stable. And stability was the difference between surviving the night and freezing. When there are no materials left, no extra layers, no tools, only your body. Frozen ground still steals heat. Heat loss does not stop just because you are exhausted. If you lie flat, your body spreads heat outward. You lose it faster. You freeze slowly. Medieval monks knew this. When nothing else remained, they changed posture. 
They slept curled, arms tight to the chest, legs drawn in, chin down. The goal was not comfort. The goal was surface area. Less exposed area means less heat loss. The body protects its core first, heart, lungs, organs. The fetal position supported that. Limbs stayed close, blood stayed central, body heat stayed where it mattered, breathing mattered too. Fast breathing wastes heat. Each breath carries warmth away. Monks slowed it down. Inhale through the nose. Short, controlled, exhale slowly. Longer than the inhale, not meditation. Heat control. Slow breathing reduced heat loss. It reduced panic. It kept oxygen steady. The rule was simple. Do not lie spread out. Do not let arms or legs drift away. Do not breathe fast. This posture did not warm the body. It slowed freezing. Records from Northern European ascetic monks 11th to 13th century describe compact sleeping posture used during winter nights inside stone cells with no fire. This was not ritual. It was last stage survival. No bed, no fire, frozen ground. Posture and breath were the final insulation. Not enough to be warm, just enough to survive the night. Not comfortable, but alive by morning. They had no bed, no fire, frozen ground and they survived the night, not because they were stronger, not because they were lucky, because they knew how heat is lost and how to slow it. Now look at us. The power goes out for a few hours. Lights die. The house turns quiet. Panic starts fast. Thermostat stops. Floor turns cold. Sleep feels impossible. We call it an emergency. Medieval monks called it winter. They slept on stone. We panic on hardwood. They had no fire. We panic when the heater fails. They had no mattress. We panic when the blanket feels thin. Frozen ground still steals body heat. That hasn't changed. Heat loss still happens through contact. That hasn't changed. What changed is what we rely on. Ask yourself three questions. If the power goes out tonight, do you know how to insulate your body from the ground? If your house turns cold, do you know where heat is actually lost? If you had to sleep on the floor, would you survive the night? Comfort does not keep you alive. Electricity does not keep you alive. Knowledge does. The monks had no convenience, but they had systems. They controlled heat loss. They controlled position. They controlled insulation. We have comfort, but no backup. That's the difference. Not ancient versus modern, prepared versus dependent. No bed, no fire, frozen ground. The rules never changed, only who remembers them. Cold night, frozen ground. No fire, no help coming, no hotline, no emergency crew. No one opening the door, just the floor beneath you and the body you're responsible for. Maybe your own, maybe your family's. Frozen ground keeps stealing body heat, even while you sleep, even while you wait. This is where systems fail. Power doesn't matter. Comfort doesn't matter. Technology doesn't matter. Only insulation does. Medieval monks were not stronger than you. They were not tougher. They just understood one thing most people forgot. Never let your body rest directly on frozen ground. Break contact, trap air, slow heat loss. That's how you survive the night. No bed, no fire, just knowledge in the right place.